push the record. Okay. So, um, Professor uh, Winker is a full professor in family medicine. He's vice dean for the community teaching and chair of the Department of Family Medicine at the Sackler School of Medicine in Tel Aviv University. He's the chief medical director of the Umid Health uh, Services, a nationwide healthcare organization in Israel serving over uh, 730,000 patients uh, since 2015. He has established a research institute in Leumit, and he's chairing it since 2018, aiming to increase research in primary care. Um, Professor Winker is also an active uh, family physician working on an urban city clinic in the city of Ashdod in Israel. Uh, he has published over 200 research articles in peer-reviewed medical journals. And his uh, main research interest is in chronic diseases management in primary care. I will now um, give the stage to Professor Winker. <laughs> and um, you are welcome to share your screen. And once again, thank you very much for um, giving us your lecture today. Thank you very much. And I hope that uh, you will find my lecture interesting. I hope that you can hear me OK. It's, you can hear me properly because I may, there have been several changes in my office in the last weekend, so everything is okay, the camera, the voice. We hear so, and see you perfectly. Okay, so we will start. Let's share the screen. Share the screen. And here is my presentation. Okay, so. Good, good afternoon and Shana Tova and Maha Tumatova, and we will start immediately with the lecture. So I will talk to you today about how to start from research and to finalize the research in a voluble publication. And I will give you mainly the, from time to time I will talk as a researcher, but mainly from the point of view of a reviewer and editor. I've been an editor for three special editions, and also I'm a member of editorial board of several journals. And of course, during my career, I think, I presume hundreds of uh, manuscripts went under my hands for a uh, review and uh, evaluation. Uh, about my affiliations, uh, two other important affiliations that were not mentioned is that I'm a member for all, on, already almost 20 years of the European uh, General Practice Research Network, the EGPRN. I also was an executive board member for a couple of years. And also I'm the chair of the Association of Family Doctors in uh, Europe, Wonka Europe. In the, from the first uh, time, I want, I want to start with a short introduction about my position and where I came from. I'm a family doctor, and as you know, uh, family doctors uh, in, in general and this, this speciality, we are not on the top in research. We are, most of us are practitioners and we are less involved in academic um, activities and in research. And it is important from this reason to learn from my experience how to reach uh, this edge uh, because as you see in Israel, we have about 7,000 general practitioners and only uh, less than 20 full, full uh, professors and only uh, one hand, or you can count on one hand the number of full professors. So if you understand, I followed my tips and I was able to publish enough uh, uh, high quality manuscripts to get the position of a full professor. Yeah, as you can see here, this is a public, my own publications. Along, unmute everybody if it's possible because, uh, okay. So here you can see uh, uh, my 30 years of publications. This is the PubMed, you see I made a search using my name. And this is my, the age index or the citations of my manuscript. This is, will be the end of when I'm telling about myself and we'll move on to the topic of our lecture today. So first of all, we have to uh, 
research starts with a good idea, with ideas, and then we have to move from creating an idea to create a research, which is not a very easily done uh, transport. So the research idea should be interesting and relevant and also have international applications. I, especially in family medicine, but also in other topics, there are a lot of, lot of, in, of research questions which, have, which are very, very important on the local or on the national level, but it is hardly to say that it will not be interest of international readers. And if something is not interest for international readers, then the chance to publish it in the international peer-reviewed journal is quite low. And of course, you have to make a research that will have unique contribution, will have additive volume to what is known about the topic. Otherwise, you are just repeating uh, other findings. And again, it will be very, very difficult to publish it. About the research design, av avoid flaws. It is very important because uh, when there is criticism about your methodology, when the manuscript is ready, it is very difficult to change it because you will not go back and do the study again from the beginning. So if your study is not well designed, then it is something that you cannot fix in the future later on while you are writing your manuscript and sending it for publication. So you have to invest a lot of time, a lot of thinking about how to design your study before you start, make it feasible. I see a lot of very good ideas, but it will take you your entire career to finish the study. So again, if you want to publish and you are in the academic world and you know that you have to come to a, a certain pace to, to stay and to, to, a, to, a, to become a higher, ranks in your academic degrees, then you have to publish. So if your study is not feasible, if it will take too much time, then maybe start with a small slice of it, but don't start with the entire study. You have to stick for the procedures. For example, I know that at least in Israel, you can perform a study without getting the permission of an IRB. For example, if you're going to to data or something like this, if you have access to the data, but later on, you will not be able to publish it because all the journals now insist to get IRB approval for your study. So stick with the procedure, don't hurry. If you have to wait to the IRB approval, wait to the IRB approval. And of course, make it generalizable as I started in the beginning. If you have a local topic, a local issue, which is relevant to your country or to your, or your, to your district, if you want to publish it, it should be generalizable, relevant to other equivalent uh, uh, um, populations. For example, if you are dealing with immigrants or with inequity, well, immigrants are coming from different countries in, in, to different countries, but at the end, Immigration medicine is something that is generalized, generalized to, uh, to the international reader. You have to work in a group, in a team. You cannot, to, today, modern, modern research, you cannot do alone. Again, it's an obstacle, in, especially in family medicine. When you are working alone, it's less relevant to universities, to faculties, to hospitals, but you should work in the team. The team should be diverse and complementary. You have to, you have, to have in your team statisticians, uh, people that are specialized in the study design, in data collection, in data analysis, et cetera. And also try to include specialists that are updated in the field. For example, you may have a good research idea. You will do an excellent study, but if you would ask experts in the, in, in the field, we'll find that, okay, what your findings are well known uh, in, the, in the field and then the chance to publish it again, it, it should, should will be low. And most important, uh, make diversity in the age, age, I mean, not the biological age, but the, the seniority in research, 
also involve young researchers that will continue to do the research for the next uh, generation of researchers. Funding. Funding is very important and is very relevant nowadays for publication because the chance to publish for free is almost zero. Sometimes uh, your institution will have some agreements for a significant waiver or even for free publications. But in general, I can say that today you have to pay and you have to pay a lot of money to publish your own research. So you have to allocate budget for the publication fee. Otherwise you will have in your hands a very good manuscript, but you will not be able to publish it because you don't have the money. So from the beginning, you have to allocate budget for the publication fees, which are, as I said, quite high nowadays. You also have to allocate budget for the English or the language. I say English because it's, it's the norm that the international publications are in English. So you have to allocate budget, budget for English editing, and we will talk about it uh, later on. So in this short introduction, I talked with you about uh, how to make the research, and of course, it's uh, not in the scope of this uh, short lecture to, uh, to, to, to know how to do a good research, but those were also on, only tips that are relevant later on to the publication of your research. So now we will move to the main part of our lecture today, and it is how to move from research to publication. So let's see what is the process, the, the, publica the process of publication. So at the beginning, as a researcher, you are writing a, pa a paper and you are submitting it to the editor of the journal. The editor reads your manuscript and he can reject it on the spot. If he feels that the, the research is on low level or if it's not relevant to his journal, he can reject it uh, at the moment that he get the manuscript and he will not send it outside to reviewers. But if he's not rejecting it and he's sending it out for reviewers, there, there is a, a cycle. And as you see, this circle can, goes, can go more than once and sometimes even four and five times from my experience, there are journals that will circulate the remarks four or even five times, but don't give up. I can tell you from my own experience that there were articles, there were manuscripts that I published after five cycles of reviewing. So the, so the editor is approaching by himself or by proxy, by his editorial board, two reviewers that are specialized in the subject. And of course, have also experience not in the, only in the clinical topic, but also in research and research design. They are reviewing the article for the quality of the research. And of course, according to their speciality and knowledge to see if it fills any gap in the knowledge in this specific. Area. They are writing the comments, the editor or one of the, the chief editor or one of the editorial board is collecting all the reviews and then he, he, decide, he or she decide whether to reject the article, a second option to reject the article or to accept the comments by the reviewers and to send the manuscript back to the authors to make changes and revisions according to the reviewer's recommendations. This revised article is coming back to the editor. And again, this circle starts again. And as I told you, it can go for several cycles until the final decision. And sometimes even after three or four cycles, eh, you can be disappointed and get a rejection. So who is the most relevant reader of your paper? you can presume that it is the journal readers or maybe the journal reviewers or the chief editor or maybe his secretary or secretary staff. 
So as you learned from the beginning, the most important reader, the most relevant reader is the chief editor because he have the option to reject your manuscript from the first step. And if he reject uh, your manuscript, it will not go to the reviewers. And of course, it will not come to the readers. So you have to know that you have to convince the chief editor of the journal that your manuscript should go for the next steps. And as you know, before the chief editor, it's, it, the article is going through the secret secretarial staff, and I will talk about it later. And believe me that it is not, it is inconvenience to see that your article was rejected by the secretary. And of course you are losing time and energy. So please, please pay attention also to the uh, technical instructions and we will go to it uh, later on. So, when you are sending the, the, the manuscript to the journal, you have to see that the journal fits this manuscript. Every journal has its specific field. And in, in this field, you have specific references. For example, there are journals that are more interested in basic science. So a study that is dealing with interviews or with questionnaires, although it's in the same field, will not find its place in the journal. Some journals are favorite of qualitative research and others of quantitative research. So you have to see that not, that not only the topic or the field is relevant, but also uh, that you feel the preferences of, of the journal. And one of the tips is just to see if you cite some other research of other studies, see if see where they were published. So if you are citing uh, other publications and uh, that were published in a specific journal, it seems that your study will fit this journal. So editors will discard immediately manuscripts that don't fit to their journal. Be aware that the submission should be 100% prepared, otherwise it will be rejected on the secretarial level. I got a few weeks ago, I'm now a guest editor of a special edition about COVID in our journal. We as Wonka Europe, we are running the journal, the European Journal of Journal Practice, and I'm the guest editor. So we got a manuscript that in the abstract there were some question marks instead of the figures, instead of the numbers. And I'm sure that it was only a typo, a mistake that that done uh, because uh, the, the author was, was not aware that he missed it. Not, but other, my, my uh, colleague, the other guest editor said, okay, I, I feel that this author think that we are not a serious journal. So maybe we will reject it and say, okay, okay, don't reject it because such a small mistake, let us ask them again to, to revise it and to send us again. But again, if the other uh, editor was the only editor, he would reject it immediately. And also if we didn't reject it again, we have to send it back to the, to the author. And again, you are losing time, I can tell you especially nowadays about COVID public publications, the publication that would be accepted almost immediately a few months ago. Now, when the interest in the COVID pandemic went down, it will be very difficult to publish. So pay attention to fit the journal style for the tables, for the reference figures, titles, the length of the abstract, and et cetera. Be aware that the submission is preferred 100%. And nowadays when everything is electronically and rejection is quite fast and it is the usual manner that you have to send second and third and fourth journal, be aware to change and to see that the, the manuscript fits for the new journal that you are sending it. So what is in the editor's mind? He looks for the structure to see that if it's clear, the English is fine, 
uh, acceptable, readable, understandable. The structure is following the structure of the, of the journal and have all the relevant parts, etc. We'll go through it later on. And also, uh, he is starting to dig inside your research. Does it matter? Is it new? As I told you in the beginning, do we fill a gap that is missing uh, in the literature? And is it true, which means about the methodology? The methodology is very, very important. And as I told you in one of the first slides, if there is flaws, if the methodology is problematic, then the chance to publish it in a good journal is very, very low because if there are problems in the methodology, we cannot say that the findings are real. So the answer for is it true is yes. And if the editor is not, is not a fully uh, agree fully uh, understandable that what is presented is true, he will reject uh, the, the manuscript. He will not risk the reputation of the journal to publish uh, findings that are maybe not the truth. So this is the structure of uh, the article and uh, today, we will dig into the most important parts of the article. All the parts are important, but there are some parts that are more important, that are critical. So we will go mainly to the title, to the abstract, and a little bit we'll dig to the methods. And something very interesting that you have to remember, and at the beginning, it was a surprise to me. Now we say, okay, all the, all the journals now are electronical. So what does it matter if your document has one page, two pages, 10 or 20 pages? So it is not like this. Even if the journal is electronic, the space is precious. So the article should be as brief as possible. And if you can say something in fewer words, do it. Don't be misled by that. The fact that the journals now are electronic to write long and too long uh, manuscripts. So in order to convince the editor and the reviewers that your article is suitable for publication, what are the most important parts of the paper? The title and the abstract. And what are the other parts that are important? The last sentence of the introduction, which is actually the beginning of usually you say the aims of your study and you are going then to the methods and to the results and also uh, the discussion, the beginning and the end of the discussion. The results uh, should be visible. So results should be visible. So if you have good graphs and tables, oh, this is very important. Uh, because the editor and the reviewers don't uh, have a lot of time. So I, I will show you how do we read later on the manuscript. We are not starting from the last, the first word of the title and ending at the end of the last word of the reference. We are, we are reading it a little bit different. And you can see as readers also, how do you yourself, you are reading a manuscript and you see, and then you understand why this is important. And of course, the methods, uh, we will discuss also a little bit about how to write the methods. So before you are starting to do research, and later on, before you start to write your uh, article, you have to understand, you have to ask yourself and to give yourself the answers. First of all, the four whys, we call it the four whys. Why did you start to do the research? What did you do? I mean, what, what were your, your methodology? What are your, your main findings? And what is the meaning or what is the interpretation or what is the relevance of uh, your findings? You have to answer yourself those four questions. Those four questions, the four answers should be in the manuscript and it should be clear to the reader. It shouldn't dig 
deep inside to find the answers. It should be obvious and transparent to the reader. So let's start with the title. How to increase the impact of your manuscript title? You should follow those tips. Ensure that the title is clear, interesting, and attracts the reader's attention. And prefer using declarative titles. The title should be not too long and not too short, between 10 to 15 words. See that it highlights key aspects of the study and see that you are using the keywords that you used in uh, uh, indexing the manuscript. So the keywords uh, should appear also at the title and don't use unnecessary words, don't use technical jargon and make sure again that the title fits to the journal guidelines and to the journal formats. And sometimes when you are resubmitting uh, your uh, manuscript to another journal, uh, you have to reconsider the title and even uh, make some uh, changes in this title. So it should be specific enough to tell uh, what, what is the article about. You have to see titles of similar uh, articles in, your, in the journal that you are submitting. As I told you in the previous slide, use the keywords, no, don't use abbreviations, and try to see, you know, it's also always a good idea to check it uh, among your colleagues before uh, sending the manuscript. So ask a colleague uh, what he or she is understanding from uh, this title and if they don't understand it, then it should be self-explanatory. They should understand it without giving any, any explanation. The abstract is the most important part of your manuscript because it is the advertisement of your article. It should be interesting, easy, and understandable without reading the whole article. It must be accurate and specific. Sometimes I find, okay, in the abstracts, uh, you said, okay, we find that about three quarters of uh, our population well, uh, had COVID, for example, and then, in the manuscript, I find that it is 73.5%. It should be the same. The same figures, the same numbers should be in the abstract and in the main text. And it should be brief, and usually the journals urge you to be brief because there is a limitation in the number of the words in the abstract, in, I think in every journal that I know. You have to understand that the abstract is the only part of the paper that the potential reviewer see when he is invited by the, an editor to review a manuscript. The editor is sending your manuscript for review. He sends the abstract. And then the reviewer, if find the abstract interesting, then he agrees to make the review. But for example, if the abstract is not interesting, not relevant, one of the problems nowadays for editors are, is to find reviewers. So if uh, the reviewers are not interested in reviewing your manuscript, then the evaluation process can take months and months because it is very difficult to find the reviewers. So make the abstract attractive to the reviewers. Pay attention that for the future, after the publication, most of the readers will read only your abstract. In most electronic databases, there is only the abstract that is available. So this is why the abstract is so, so important. Only dedicated readers will go through the content, the entire content of the, of, of the paper. And only those with specific interest in the subject uh, will go through the entire paper. So again, this is why the abstract is so important because most of your readers, the vast majority of your readers will not go behind, beyond the abstract. 
So some tips for the abstract, and as you can see, I paid a lot of attention to this part of the manuscript. Check that the abstract can be read independently from the main text. The keywords should be in the abstract. Avoid abbreviations, which is quite difficult because, you know, because of the limitation of number of words, usually you have to go to abbreviations, otherwise you will not be able to give, to send, to give your message in the abstract. Pay attention that if you have to cut something in the abstract, if you have a limitation of words, cut the background, cut the background or the part of the introduction because the readers of the journal, the editors, the reviewers are familiar with, with, the, uh, with, the, uh, with the scientific background. So avoid abbreviations as much as possible and uh, state the objective or the aim of your study, of course. The results section should start with, usually you have a lot of results and you have to choose the best or the most relevant results to the abstract. So see that at least the results that answer the research question are in the abstract. And use, don't save the words on the, figures and the effect size, which means the clinical significance, the, the statistical significance, etc. And sometimes say, okay, many patients says this and this. No, cite the exact number, cite the statistical significance in the abstract. Otherwise, it will not go through the reviewers. And of course, say, see that the abstract fits with the main text. And if you are changing the main text, for example, after revision, you have to recheck the abstract and to see that this, uh, uh, this consistency uh, remains. So I paid a lot of attention for the abstract because it is very, very important. It is a very important part of uh, the manuscript. The introduction is important, everything is important, but less important. It should be short and precise. You have to understand that the journal readers and also the editors and the reviewers are familiar with the literature on the topic. If it's a study about something with diabetes, don't start with the description, what is diabetes, what is uh, the prevalence and incidence of diabetes in different countries in the world. It's important, it's interesting, but it's not relevant to, uh, to your research or to your uh, manuscript. Be very short and precise and make a short introduction. Cite relevant references, up-to-date references that are relevant to your research question. Pay attention that references must be updated. I'll give you an example as a reviewer. If I see now, it, now we are reaching the end of 2022 and I see that the most updated reference cited that is uh, three or four years old. So I have a question mark. I say, okay, maybe it's a sign that this manuscript had been rejected several times. So if it's been rejected by other journals, why to publish it in my journal? I start to, to make some suspicions about the quality of the, of the manuscript. Another mistake is that, okay, for example, if it's a PhD thesis, it takes a couple of years from uh, generating the idea, doing the research and uh, writing the final uh, report and the uh, manuscript. And be careful, update, uh, and then the references are quite old because you did a very intensive literature review when you uh, wrote your thesis. So pay attention to update. If the thesis was written several years ago before sending the manuscript for publication, please update the literature review. Reviewers don't like unupdated uh, literature. It means that this manuscript is circling too much time and again, it makes a uh, us to be suspicious about the quality. 
the last sentence of the introduction or the last paragraph should end with the gap, the gap, the, the aim, why we are doing this study. What gap in the knowledge we are going to fill uh, with this research question, with this manuscript. And this is something that should be at the end of every introduction. So as you see, introduction is important, but not that important as the abstract. So I gave it only one slide in my presentation. Now let's move to the methods. And as you see from this slide, I am and I'm not the only one that is calling the methods part the cookbook of uh, the cookbook of the research, which means you know if you want to have a, to make a cake, you open this cookbook, you are following the instructions, and at the end you have a cake that is tasty and you can eat it. So. What I mean is that if a researcher is reading your methods, he can do the same study again and hopefully uh, to come to the same uh, results. So this is the first uh, most important thing about the methods and you know we'll go like we will go in the next uh, slide about a little deeper into this cookbook. First of all, you have to remember that you are facing an international uh, reviewer or international reader. I'll give an example from Israel. I, I think that uh, a lot of our uh, participants, a lot of the members in our, the audience are from Israel. So if, if I will say for them that I am, the study was done in a Kupat Cholim, everybody will know what is a Kupat Cholim. But if I write it, in English, Kupat Cholim, and like many, many other English, no one in the world will know what is Kupat Cholim. And also, if I will write an HMO, Health and Maintenance Organization, again, sometimes I will have to add another sentence explaining what is the system. I had a review a few weeks ago from a study in China about, again, a family doctor, it was about primary care. And it was not clear to me a very simple question. I don't know anything about the Chinese healthcare system. I don't, I didn't know if they, and it was something about consultations and primary care and interactions. And I, it was not clear to me if there is a gate system, a gatekeeping system, uh, which means that you need a referral to a specialist or not. And I suspected that not but it was not clear. And if there is a gatekeeping system or not, uh, it, of course, the interactions are totally different between us. So remember that uh, your manuscript will be read by an international reader that is not always familiar with your healthcare uh, systems. I told you that it should be cookbook, but the cookbook should be, should be exactly with Detail, not too much details and not too less. I mean, you cannot, you, you should go into the small details, but it should be in a visible length. The type of the study should be clear and well defined, and tools that you are using, it's using in your study. If they are validated tools, instead of giving the entire description of the tool, just send, uh, put a reference to the source of this tool and it, it, it would be easier. And if someone wants to make the study again, then it will go to this reference. The definitions should be clear and acceptable. For example, age groups are quite, uh, let's say, international. Uh, you can say that children are till the age of 18, sometimes until the age of 20, but and the elderly are above 65 or 75. But if you will start to split to, uh, to uh, definitions that are not acceptable, for example, elderly will start at the age of 61 and children will age at the end of 64, uh, 24, then as a reviewer, I will have some question. Okay, maybe it is an artificial split and an artificial definition that 
the, the, the authors make this, made this definition in order to fit for the findings that didn't fit to the usual definition. So you have to stick to the usual the acceptable definitions. And if you are moving from those definitions, it should be clear and acceptable why you used it. The statistical part of the methods, it, again, it's something that is usually quite routine and should be not too long and not too short. To summarize the tips, you have to specify the study design, the context of the setting, the population, how you sample uh, the population for your study. If you made an intervention, what, is, what kind of intervention? How did you collect the data? And of course, how you describe, uh, how you, the description of your study uh, variables. So, you will surprise to, to, to know that our publications, how not to display your data. So I collected several examples of bad graphs because graphics or figures are very good to give a message, very good to give a clear message. Usually the reader don't have, and the reviewer as well, don't have time to go through all the details and one figure usually gives a lot of information. But here you can see a few examples of very bad slides that at the end you cannot understand anything. And of course, uh, there are, I, I was surprised when I prepared this lecture to find that there are a lot of bad, bad slides, bad figures, bad tables that are presented in, in the internet. So about the results table in figures, uh, you have to report your the data collection and recruitment. For me as a reviewer, the response rate is very important. And when the response rate is too high, I'm also a little bit suspicious about how to uh, the authors report the results. Because if you are doing an, an, an electronic uh, survey by emails and get 95% response rate or even 60% response rate. I don't believe to uh, this uh, figure. And if, you know, I don't believe from the beginning, then I will be much more suspicious when I'm evaluating all the data that is uh, presented in the, in the manuscript. Of course, you have to present if it's uh, uh, human participants, the uh, demographics and clinical background is very important. A result should be presented precisely and consistent along, along the manuscript. Tables should be self-explanatory and should not be replicated in the main text. Only the most important results should be uh, mentioned in the results section. Uh, you cannot write the entire description of the table in the manuscript. It, it, it's, it's a duplication and all reviewers and editors will uh, give you a remark about it and you will have to show them their results. If you have a lot of data, a lot of tables and figures, you have to choose the ones that fit most to your research question and research answer. And because nowadays we are electronic, uh, there are many journals that have the option to add supplementary materials, a lot of tables that will is supplementary to the main tables and main findings. Avoid the use of postdoc analysis. The, again, we don't like it. We, and we have suspicions about the accuracy of the uh, results that are reported. The discussion also is very important and uh, I, as a reviewer, likes to see especially the part about the strengths and limitations of the study. There are no studies without limitation. Nobody, nobody is perfect. And the limitations should be real ones. I see from time to time that uh, the author is writing, you know, something that is not a real limitation because, okay, this was a limitation of our study, but we did this and this and this, so actually it's not a limitation. So don't be afraid 
to show your limitation, to, to show to the editor and to the reviewer that you are aware of your limitation. Otherwise, he will ask them anyway. He will ask you anyway about those uh, limitations. And of course, you have to end with a practice or policy implications of your results and what is the perspective for future research uh, in, in the field. Because of course, every time that you are answering a question, many other questions are arising. I will just go a little bit faster about the, about the reference I told you that it should be updated and it should be accessible. Language and editing, okay. So nowadays to say that you are a mother speaking, in, uh, talking English is not enough. Uh, you have to, to use qualified editing. Uh, you have to choose the English if it's UK or US and should, should be consistent along the manuscript. And of course, do editing. Uh, when you are doing editing, I, I noticed many times that the English is perfect, editing is perfect, but only on the main text. Remember that there are tables and figures, there are the headings and titles of the tables and figures and figures and also uh, they should be edited. And follow the instructions, put each paragraph in the correct section. I found many times that there are parts that belong to the methodology section that are in the introduction. Sometimes you are putting the results in the method section, results should be the results. And two important things, you cannot describe the methodology for the first time in the results section. It should be clear from the beginning what the methodology, methodology you used. And you cannot discuss results that were not presented in the results section. When you see the slide, it's 100% logical. So oh, how come that you are discussing results that you don't mention? But believe me, I saw many, many uh, manuscripts with those uh, problems uh, along the, the, the flow of the manuscript. So how to choose the journal? The impact factor is important, but it's not the only thing that's important because you have to balance the desire to publish in a top quality journal with the need for public or rapid publication. Well, I want to publish everything in the New England Journal of Medicine, for example. Uh, so it's a good desire. Why? Because New England Journal of Medicine usually reject the manuscript very quickly, I find sometimes less than 24 hours. But there are other journals, top quality journals, that the rejection process takes a little bit more time and then three, four cycles and you lose several months uh, in the publication and sometimes you can miss the entire publication. So prioritize three to five journals that fits your study. And, uh, and as I told you, one of tips is to see uh, the references in your own study. The impact factor is important, but it is not the entire picture. Pay attention to the rank, to the Q, in which quartile uh, the journal is, uh, is uh, uh, ranked. For example, I can't, I'm coming from family medicine, impact factor of three, top journal in family medicine, in primary care and family medicine. If you are coming from endocrinology or basic science, the impact factor of three is nothing. So it is not only the impact factor, it's also the rank. I will not go to the cover letter. It is an important part. And uh, usually you can just write once a very good a cover letter and then just make changes in, to uh, your new uh, manuscripts. This is what I did in the past. We have a good cover letter and then just make the changes from uh, manuscript to manuscript. This is my last slide and this is very important. And this is how to approach the reviewer's comments. This is very important. You have to think of the reviewer as is your friend and not as your enemy. 
From time to time, you will find enemies, but it is a minority. Most of the viewers are doing the work. They don't know you usually. Uh, sometimes it's even the review process is anonymous. So you think that they know you, but they actually don't know you. And they are doing a critical review of the manuscript. So they are on the same side as you. Both of you have the interest to have a good publication. So they are your friend, not your enemy. So try to answer the comments and not to argue with the reviewers. You know, uh, sometimes as a reviewer, I, I make a remark. And then instead of making a very simple change in the manuscript, I get three or three paragraphs of explanations why I am wrong and why the authors are not going to make this change. Let's think that the authors are correct. The problem is that most of the readers, or almost every one of the readers, will read only the manuscript and not the correspondence between me as a reviewer and the author. And they may come to the same conclusion as I can as a reviewer. So try to make the changes and not to send a long paragraphs of arguing or uh, with, with, uh, with the reviewer. And sometimes, you know, you have to compromise. Uh, but don't be, don't change uh, the main message. But if it's something that you, can, you feel that as a as a researcher, you can compromise, make the changes that the reviewer asked. Because you have to remember, your aim is not only to do research; your aim is also to publish. It. And the most important message is don't give up, because as I told you. There are reviewers that are making cycles and cycles and cycles and editors sometimes sending to another reviewer and then another uh, comments appear and say, okay, I'm exhausted, don't give up. Usually at the end, I presume that every good research will find its place, uh, its place in a journal, uh, in a published journal. I want to thank you and I hope that uh, you enjoyed the lecture. I'll stop sharing my screen. Here we are. So we have, uh, we have left several minutes for questions. So if you have any question, it's the time. Shlomo, I want to thank you. It was fascinating uh, and very valuable. Um, please, if ever, anyone has any question, you may raise your hand or unmute yourself and uh, ask uh, directly. And also you can share my email and if there are specific questions or tips, or I can answer personally everyone. Oh, I see. Now I can see the names and I can see very, very honorable guests. For example, Professor Shai Ashkenazi that can teach me how to publish. It's a great honor to me that he's here and uh, many others that uh, I can recognize and I see some names that are surely not Israeli. So we have international audience, so perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so I think it was so good that uh, um, all of the questions we might have had along the way were answered. Um, so thank you. Um, again, it was very valuable and very much appreciated. Um, this uh, uh, webinar will be uploaded to our uh, uh, website and um, it will be available for everyone any anytime. Uh, I think we've all learned a lot from your lecture. Thank you once again. Okay, I wrote my phone number and now I wrote my email. So if anyone is interested, you can contact me in the chat. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, then. So if no questions, then we can conclude. Uh, we can end the meeting. Um, and thank you. Have a nice afternoon. And uh, yeah. Maybe we will see you once again. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. My pleasure. Good night. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.